The portable solder station keeps your supplies in one place. It declutters your workspace, it's completely portable, it's pretty cool, and it's green. I needed a container that would hold my most used soldering supplies that could easily move from the electronics lab to out here in the shop or anywhere else I needed to solder. And I needed to stay all together so I could find all the pieces. So I came up with this, a portable soldering station. The portable soldering station keeps my most used solder tools and components in a single box. Everything is stored right where it is used so the box can be opened and used immediately without worrying about deploying or rearranging parts. It is by far the most organized solder station I have ever had. Yay! With this portable soldering station, my soldering iron travels everywhere and I always have all the soldering accessories I need to get the job done just by carrying this box from one job site to another. It's been a real time saver for me. Here's our equipment. Soldering control box, soldering iron holder and sponge, soldering iron, brass wool tip cleaner, copper braid used for soaking up unneeded solder, and of course, solder, plus some heat shrink tubing. It's time to build. The first thing we need is a box, so we're going to cut the top and bottom first. Then the left and right sides are cut. And to finish the box, the front and back pieces are cut. The sides are cut off at an angle because this is going to be two wedge-shaped boxes that attach together. With all the parts cut, it's time for the glue up. Two wedge-shaped boxes, glued and clamped together. Three hours later. The glue is dry enough for the next step, so it's time to unclamp and test fit them to see if they actually fit together. They do. Hey look, it's a box. Now we've got the basic box built, but anybody can build a box. What we need is a home for our soldering iron. So let's build the internals. The first thing to do was to grab some scraps out of our scrap box. Our scrap box contains scraps from probably 100 projects from over the years. Tony Stark had a great scrap box, and he ended up saving the world with his scraps. Just think what you could do with yours. The first internal component is an open-topped compartment that will hold the power supply cord and the soldering iron cord. A thin rectangular scrap is drilled to hold two vertical bolts that will hold solder inside the portable solder station. A variable drill bit is used to hollow out a space at the bottom of the strip to hide the bolt heads. Two bolts are inserted into the holes. The assembly is glued down. And now we have two posts that will hold spools of solder. And then a storage box is built for heat shrink tubing. Because heat shrink tubing is freaking awesome. If you aren't using heat shrink tubing, what's wrong with you? You should be using this stuff. This is what the heat shrink tubing compartment looks like after it's painted and the lid is attached with Velcro. But we haven't painted it yet, so forget you saw this. Since in reality, nothing has been painted yet, it's time to sand the box. You may have noticed that we like to paint things out here in the shop. That's because wood is all the same color, different shades of wood color. So we like to paint things and make it more joyful and fun, and it just makes it a lot nicer to be out here in the shop. Well, we've got quite a few colors here, what we call the arsenal of color, so let's pick some and get this box painted. Using our fold-out paint booth, the lid wedge is primed and painted brown. We painted the other piece the same way, and then we painted the outside green. But you don't want to watch us paint everything twice, so just believe us when we said that we painted both sides, and we painted the outside green, and we'll leave it at that. While the paint dries, a word about solder safety. Soldering irons, even soldering irons as small as this one, run pretty hot, and they can be dangerous. 
Always use eye protection because the solder can sometimes spit out of a solder job and hit you in the eye. And the last thing you want is molten metal hitting you in the eye. It's no fun. I speak from experience. And make sure you hold your soldering iron properly. How do you know if you're doing it right? If it smells like chicken, you're doing it wrong. Oh. This is the internal compartment in its final form. And now the green top is test fitted to make sure that it didn't distort or do anything unusual during the painting process. It didn't, it was friendly, so everything fits. The top wedge is entirely removable and it is held in place by two L brackets that hold its thin edge and keeps it from moving. The other end of the wedge is held in place by two pins. We're going to fabricate the pins out of two screws. So we put two screws in after drilling the hole through the wedge and then a Dremel is used to cut the screw head off. What's left are two pins that embed themselves in the wedge and hold it in place. A handle is added so that we can carry this thing around. Two hatches hold everything shut. To open the box, open the catches, lift the handle and pull it right off. The box is built, the internals are complete. It's time for our long lost soldering iron to finally get its home. All the components can now be mounted in their final positions inside the portable soldering station. Velcro is used to hold everything down. This is done for two reasons. One, we might want to take these components out. And two, well, we just met this portable soldering station. We're not sure this relationship is going to work out. The four solder spools that the portable soldering station can hold are held in by washers and nuts. Then the lid is attached with the L brackets holding the back, the pins holding the front, and the catches holding it all together. Everything fits inside a great looking green box that can be carried anywhere and used at any time. Oh yeah, yeah, did I mention? It's green. What is it? Well, it's, um... It's green. All the components are laid out in an easy to reach format that's readily available for soldering as soon as the box is opened. All right, the portable soldering station is finished. It's all painted, configured, all the equipment's in place. It's pretty solid, it's not going anywhere, but it's portable and we're in a wood shop. So what's the point of having something portable if you can't take it out? So let's take it someplace and see how it performs. Well, that's it for the portable soldering station. It's small and might seem kind of insignificant, but really to us it's a big deal because we can carry it from the wood shop out here to the electronics lab in the house or even to a remote site to work on it. We know right away we have all of our gear with us. If you have similar needs with electronics or whatever else, you might want to consider a dedicated toolbox or something as specialized as our soldering station. Highly recommend it. And paint it too. It just looks good. And looking good, of course, as you know, is half the battle. If you like this sort of thing, if you like the videos we're making, hey, we'd love to have you as a subscriber. Subscribe and ring that bell and join us next time. We've always got stuff under development. We're traveling places. We're gonna show you some neat stuff like maker fairs and things. So we want you to be there when we publish every Friday. So subscribe and we'll see you next time. And, and make sure you hold your soldering iron properly. Always use solder. 
Always use solder protection, because the goggles can hit you in the eye. We're lighting up. Are you ready? Yeah. Isn't that too much? 